live, the universe, uh, everything, all of your parameters uh, of the things uh, you have. Um, I'm going to break those into six things. Okay, so number one is going to be space. Okay, and it's not just space, uh, outer space. It's going to be um, right here in this room, right where you are. So it can be as big as universe, but where are you right now? and how we define that, okay? So uh, a lot of times when it comes to uh, space, it is going to be even uh, the X, Y, Z Cartesian coordinates, okay? Or we could get um, uh, polar coordinates, okay? Of, uh, of some sort of thing. And there'd be other ways to, uh, other ways to talk about it such as um, the cardinal directions, uh, north, south, east, and west. Okay, so where are you? So uh, in physics, as in a lot of things, we need to define uh, where we are. Okay, now the next thing is going to be, uh, it's going to be time, all right? Uh, all of time, right? So it could be since the beginning of the universe, and it could be, uh, you know, a nanosecond. Okay. But all of those things are going to be the temporal component of how you live. So, um, we're going to talk about primarily, uh, seconds, right? But it could be minutes, hours, years, um, etc. So that, uh, is the time how we live our life. So everything doesn't happen all at once. Okay, so the next thing we have is going to be matter. Okay, what is stuff? Okay, so we're just going to use our we're going to use our kindergarten uh, way of where we uh, we're going to think about it is just uh, matter is just stuff. Now in physics, we're going to call that mass. Okay, so that could be down to um, the sub molecular particles like quarks um, and um, mesons and bosons and things like that. Um, now, for ordinary physics, we're not really going to talk about that so much, but we're going to be uh, at the atomic level. So we got atoms and molecules. Okay. Now, obviously, this is going to be um, more chemistry. So, for um, for the stuff in general classic um, physics, we're going to talk about um, things in kilograms. You're going to have a an object, and it's going to weigh two kilograms or one kilograms, like a box. Okay. All right. So. Moving on, we're going to have forces. Now, from a um, from a kindergarten sort of thing, a force is just going to be a push or pull. Okay. Now, uh, in physics, we have um, direct uh, direct forces and field forces, okay? Now, there are four basic types of forces, okay? There is going to be gravitational, uh, and there is going to be electromagnetic, and there is going to be the strong and the weak uh, strong and the weak nuclear forces okay so these are all field forces which um, which operate um, at at a distance so if I take if I take this pen and I drop it, I'm not touching it, but it is going to go down because there's a gravitational field. There's going to be a gravitational field, and that's, and that's what makes it go. 
All right, same thing with um, electromagnetic. Now, when I have direct forces, so if I push, you guys, if I push on this um, whiteboard, it, you're basically saying that there's a direct force. Now, ultimately, that's gonna end up being an electromagnetic field force, but we'll talk about, we'll talk about that later. Okay, so we got two other, we got, we got two other things that we're going to talk about in this introduction to physics, okay? And the penultimate is going to be energy. So energy is um, the ability to do work. Now, the ability to do work is um, what the heck is work. So that's a whole other thing that we will get into. But we're really talking about something that is going to make stuff move or put something in a particular place, okay? So it's either movement or position, okay? So if it's movement, we're talking about kinetic energy, and if it is position, we're talking about potential energy. So we can have gravitational potential energy, we can have um, kinetic energy, just something moving, right? But we can also have um, potential energy in an electromagnetic field, okay? And same with the strong and weak nuclear force. You guys, uh, these two forces really operate at the tiny sub, um, subatomic, uh, subatomic level, so we really won't get uh, into this. All right. So our last, um, our last thing is momentum. So uh, momentum um, is really just defined as uh, mass times velocity, okay? Uh, which is given the, um, which is given the uh, variable uh, of p. Um, now this this seems uh, kind of specific here, but what we what we have here with momentum, uh, along with energy, they will explain. They will explain how everything um, moves uh, in our universe, moves uh, within us, uh, and just just knowing uh, how much energy. For example, kinetic energy turning into potential energy and vice versa doesn't necessarily explain how those things are transferred. Momentum is the, the second part um, that allows us to really delineate where um, all of that energy comes from and where it goes and how it is transferred. So um, we, will, uh, we will be getting into that. So, all of these six things is a good way to kind of define uh, and what is the makeup, what is the makeup of um, uh, physics. Now, what is, uh, what is interesting here is that we can work essentially in three different, in three different uh, modes, okay? We're gonna have translational, okay? So it's going to move in a line, okay? And we're going to have rotational, okay? So it's going to move in a circle. And then we're going to have vibrational. Uh, uh, up and down. back and forth. So uh, in the beginning of this course, we're gonna talk about all of these things over here uh, in terms of translational. This is kind of straight line motion uh, and also just curved, uh, a smooth curved um, motion as well. Like when we throw a ball and it goes uh, into a parabolic curve. And then we will get into rotational uh, and then um, vibrational. but. Because this linear is kind of the easiest, this linear stuff is kind of the easiest thing um, to uh, think about in terms of all of this, okay? We'll do that first and then we'll add in the rotational part and then we'll add in the vibrational part at the end. 
Now, if you think about translational, rotational, and vibrational, that can, uh, will explain all of the motions. And really, everything, everything is, um, for the most part, doing all three of these types of motion at the same time. So if I take this, if I took this pen and I threw it, okay, now we could think about, we could think about this and just think of it as one object moving in a, let's say a parabolic curve on a smooth curve, okay? Um, but whenever you throw something like this, a lot of times uh, it is rotating in, uh, in space, right? So we're gonna have this um, translational, the smooth curve, and then there's gonna be this rotational component of it. Uh, and depending on if, uh, as this thing moves through a fluid, it could essentially um, move in some sort of way due to the interference of the fluid. Um, but if we think even at the microscopic level, the uh, thermodynamically, all the molecules in this pen are gonna be vibrating back and forth. And so that is, um, sort of a vibrational sort of thing. So, um, so you guys, that's where we're kind of uh, going there. And as uh, most of you are all really excited that we're gonna do this all with math because uh, that is the language of science. Um, so, uh, and, in, and in this course, really, we're kind of taking science and we're turning it into a math course, which is going to be the basis for all uh, the sciences moving, whether it is uh, chemistry, biology, astronomy, um, geology, geography, all those things are really coming from um, this, um, these six components um, and um, moving on. And you guys, we're not really here. This is sort of classic uh, physics, and we're not really um, getting into um, both the um, quantum level, which is kind of a whole a whole nother thing, uh, nor the relativistic um, components, uh, which would um, also essentially take all these things, but really kind of turn it on it turn it on its head. Um, and those would be components in your uh, in your physics education, you would at some point get to the, the quantum levels of that and also to the um, uh, the relativistic um, sorts of things. And if you think about some of these things um, that uh, could you take all of this and, and bring it down into smaller things? And the answer is yes. So uh, if you just think about um, uh, energy and matter, okay, so if if you um, obviously know Einstein's um, mass energy equivalence of e equals mc squared, really energy and matter, energy and matter are really uh, the same thing, okay? Or they're different components of the same thing and then they have, an, they have an equivalence. And we have a lot of other of these combinations. If we are moving through space in a certain amount of time, okay, um, that would be required um, to have some force making it go. And that force really comes from, um, from that energy. And that energy um, is conserved. It starts, it starts out with, um, with only a certain amount of energy. So if we use energy in some place, it's, we're going to detract it from another. Okay. Uh, and then momentum is also conserved. And we'll get into that later. So hopefully... You're going to enjoy uh, all of these um, components, and it really takes science and it breaks it down into its most um, basic forms. And uh, what's nice is that you can take all these forms and they'll come back together, and you'll be able to understand um, things really well, no matter what uh, science um, that you go into. All right. Thanks. We'll see you next time.